Well, this is different looking. We're almost done with our office extension out there, but we can't work out there right now because there's like seven guys doing things, including in our shop. So we're in here today. We literally have, well, most of our junk made it. We interrupt this video to bring you a special message from iFixit. No, we interrupt this interruption with this interruption. That new stuff from iFixit. We should have a new graphics card, but inventory sucks. Fix the inventory problems with iFixit. Whoa, don't drop it. Can't fix that with iFixit. Just kidding, yes you can. Wish you could take iFixit with you anywhere, but your pockets aren't big enough. Introducing the new Moray. And the new Mino. Take them with you anywhere. So get iFixit for your loved ones, or just get them for yourself. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do today. We're gonna talk about my new switch. This is our uh, 10G switch. You're probably gonna hear construction sounds. Again, I apologize for all that. Everything is so dirty around here. So this right here is the MicroTik router board. Um, it is a cloud-based switch, which means it is managed if we want it to be. I don't think we'll need to use any of the management stuff built into it though. It is a rack mount. It is a dual power supply, so it's got redundant backup, uh, power backup, and then we do have obviously our rack mount brackets right there. I, you know, it's funny because Everyone was yelling in my video about the server and my setup that I was running 10G Ethernet that I should have just gone fiber or gone at least solid coaxial or uh, copper or something like that. And that's fine. I mean, SFP Plus switches are less expensive than Ethernet 10G switches. Um, the thing is, I didn't want to have to deal with putting, getting SFP Plus network cards for all of our builds. Some of my builds, because of vertical mount graphics cards and stuff, I wouldn't even be able to get the card to fit. So I decided to stick with 10G Cat 6A for now. I might consider going with uh, fiber optic or dual solid copper or something in the future because those switches would be easy to, easy to switch out. Since everything is patch panel though, it means that I would have to switch out uh, a patch panel for SFP plus stuff. Again, not super hard. And it's probably even easier to terminate an SFP plus uh, than it is to go with uh, you know patch panel or punch down ethernet. I'm actually creating more work for myself doing it this way. But I also went with what would get me up and running the fastest. But this is a 12 port 10 gig uh, or 10G ethernet that does also have four SFP plus. So these are combo ports right here. Right now in the configuration, it's set so that SFP plus has the priority. So if I was to plug something into if I was to pull this out, put it in an SFP, even if I did SFP to ethernet adapter, which you could do, which would be stupid because it's already got the combo port with ethernet, um, it will disable the ethernet in junction or in, in lieu of having the SFP plus take priority. So that's default. I don't have any SFP plus stuff right now, as I've already said. I just wanted to point out that um, you couldn't do like the 12 ethernets plus four SFP plus. So these four and these four are connected. We do have our console and our um, management slash boot ethernets right here. This is if we wanna direct connect to the router with a laptop or something with like a, a crossover cable. That way we could connect, always have something connected to it. So basically what we'd be able to have is something always connected to the router with a, with a little GUI so we could configure it or we can do it over the net. Um, like I said, in this instance, I'm not planning on using this as a managed, managed switch. It's just gonna be a basic switch with all router functionality happening uh, farther down the stack. So the problem with this though, is it has got these four 20, or 40 by 20 millimeter, I don't think they're deltas. We'll look at what they are in a second here. They are pretty loud from my understanding. Every review I've watched of this particular switch has basically said, this thing sounds like a server rack on its own. So I figured we would test that. And then today we will do a mod to this, which is really simple, not too expensive, to see how well it actually changes the sound. The nice thing about the plugs on this though, although the plugs fit very, very tight, um, they do have a locking mechanism right there. So boop, boop, so the power can't accidentally pop out. Although Nick, I lied, I think I do need that, that uh, power strip because of the fact that I forgot that this is a dual power supply. So it's also my understanding that these are three pin fans, all four of these fans, so they're not PWM, so they're not gonna speed up and slow down necessarily with load. They're gonna speed up and slow down probably just based off a temperature curve. So let's see what it sounds like on startup. Oh, well, that's pretty loud. In idle? In idle, it's really not that bad. 
I love the smell of new electronics, especially when it's being blown at you. The motor hum is very annoying though. It's already speeding up. It heard me and it decided. Yeah, so it's not as loud as the server. Now it's slowing down. So, so you can see why this being near anywhere we record, which is gonna be our shop set, would be a problem. Oh, look at that. at idle, it's actually, did it turn off? Oh, it's still on. Oh, the fans turned off. Zero dB mode. Yeah, they have a zero dB mode. But the problem is it'll go from zero dB to like, wah, the drop of a hat. Yeah, and obviously while we're filming and stuff, even though this isn't gonna be in one of our offices, um, I don't want this creating more noise than our server. Our servers are gonna be the loudest thing in that stack. So we need to fix that. Once this is done booting, I'm gonna turn it off. We'll take a look at the inside and then we'll show you how, what we're gonna be replacing it with. Now I assume, because we will have pretty much all these ports occupied, including with a 24 hour DVR recorder for our security system, that this will probably be under a lot of traffic all the time and probably, especially when it's out in the warmer warehouse, the fans will always be going. So I don't expect this to ever be in that zero dB mode. I expect it to probably always sound like it does right now. Also too, Jace 2 cents uh, gaming mat right here, available at jace2cents.com. They also make really good work areas for things you don't want to scratch up because they are easy to clean, they are soft, they are flexible, and they're available now. All right, so once all those screws are off, there we go. So this one, as you can see, has an actual heat sink no warmth in there yet. Our dual power supplies right here, which I'm gonna be very careful not to touch because there could be some residual in those caps, especially with exposed coils and stuff. But we do have a fan right here, which is plugged in to the board via a three pin. But the board, if you look at it, is a four pin. You can see the fourth pin is not occupied. So it is a PWM fan header. Same thing with this one, and then two right there. So yeah, what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace these with, ah, I dropped one. Come here, son of a, ah. These are the Noctua A4 by 20. I, Noctua, I do think this is some wasted packaging. I mean, I think they're using the same box as they would up to a 140, but this is just so funny to open up and be like, no. But anyway, if Noctua, if Noctua and their reputation, dude, look at the, Look at the anti-vibration, like rubber versus the size of the fan itself. Anyway, you do get a lot of stuff with Noctua. You get the uh, low voltage adapters. Well, this is a splitter. The Omni Joint adapter set. I don't know, something you have to solder, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, this is all we're after right here. This is a four pin version. They do have this in a three pin, but I figured I want to take advantage of the four pin um, W or PWM on this switch. So I got four of these. They were $14 a piece on Amazon. Not the cheapest fan in the world, but so that times four, we're talking 50 bucks. No, 60 bucks basically. But the switch itself is 600. So I think a 40 or $60 investment or 10% of the cost of the router, if you want to look at it that way, to keep it quiet. When this is just about the only 10G greater than eight port switch option that I have, because I would have loved to have had a 20 port, but they don't really exist. At least not that I could find. I, I was also kind of limiting myself to what I could find on Amazon. Yes, there are like server supply shops and stuff online that I could have gotten a switch from, but they were like 2000 to 2,500 bucks. And that's just not necessary. If we had obviously more people here, if we had tons of people connect to the net all the time. If I had something greater than coaxial gigabit down and 45 up, then I would consider it. This realistically is just so that all of our work rigs can have a faster connection, faster than gigabit to our server, which is where we store all of our files and uh, backups and moving forward, our Steam cache and our game installers and programs that we use all the time when we're doing reviews um, it's just a lot easier rather than going online and grabbing stuff all the time just to grab it from the server. Now, if you're doing this yourself, please, for the love of God, be super careful around the power supply. It would have probably been fine up until the point I plugged it in right now, because now these caps are charged. And 
it's just like, I don't know if there's anything in here that's gonna draw power out of those caps while it's just sitting here. It's a huge cap and the coil is visible. Like you could touch it. Don't do that. That would be very bad. And I don't want any of you electrocuting yourself and or possibly killing yourself because of the fact that you wanted to do this mod. I, I want everyone to live. So please do as I say, not as I do. Oh, it's kind of, do you look at all the stuff that came out? Cause it has oh, the, geez. it has the thread itself, you know, obviously. Oh, there we go. So there's one knock to it in there. You can see the one that was over here was actually smaller depth than the one that's over here. So that means these, the fans I'm putting in there right now are probably not going to go all the way up to the heatsink and touch it. But as long as it's pulling air off of it, I feel confident that it will be okay. Everybody asks me every single time, Jay, what screwdriver is that? It is literally the cheapest Amazon screwdriver I could find at the time when I was shopping for one. I, I don't, I don't know. It doesn't have a name on it. Oh wait, hammerhead. There, it's a hammerhead. It also has a circuit tester. There we go. Yeah, I don't know. It's lasted for years and I've abused the absolute crap out of it. So there you go, if you want one. I would say I'll put a link in the description, but I always forget. So why even, why, why just get your guys' hopes up for no reason at all, right? Here we go. Oh, there's screws. I just flung all the screws for the chassis on the floor. Um. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> we almost did it again. We almost forgot to put the code in. We're so damn busy around here, I keep forgetting to do it. So that's why you're getting two codes again today. The first code is secret code 69. The number's 69, not spelled out. So it's S-E-C-R-E-T-C-O-D-E 69. And the other one is, how do I enter? Just spelled out. How do I enter? So all I'm doing with the 3M tape here is I'm trying to create a little bit of a a block off here, so at least the air that's coming through the fans on the top, at least, will be going through the heat sink. This may not even be necessary, but just in case, I don't know. I don't want to hurt the cooling at all, but I think that this will be okay. All right. Oh, they're on. They're on, I can feel the air blowing. It's not doing that crazy startup thing though. I wonder if it's because of PWM now versus being three pin. So now it's just straight up based on load. You can hear him ramp it up a little bit. But there's still like, like feel the airflow coming out of the back. It's, it's not like there's no airflow. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like knock to it, did it again. So yeah, I mean, like I say, it was about 60 bucks worth of fans. But now we have a switch that doesn't sound like a server on its own. Well, what I will do is I will put a link to this switch down below. I'm curious if I just missed online some sort of a nice 20 port, 10 gig ethernet. I, I really want to stick with ethernet for now. You guys can tell me all the reasons why you think that's dumb. That's fine. That's why we have choices. Um, but if I just miss something, maybe that's still considered cost effective. Dang, that's so quiet. If I stick my ear to it, all I hear is the whoosh of wind. I don't hear the fan at all. God, how does Knock to it do it? Man, those guys are freaking wizards, I tell you. Um, anyway, if I, if I missed something that would have been a very nice alternative to this, then what I would love is for you guys to let me know down below because I, I switching out the switch is not hard. And I think that that is something that I'm, I would be willing to change out. Oh, do I need the, I need the iFixit for these screws, how funny, whatever. I was gonna put the brackets on right now, but let me know. And if it ends up being cost effective and it gives me more ports, that way I'm not, because remember I've got eight data drops. So it's a 12 port, one's an uplink, so that's nine. We need to have one for our, our um, 24 hour DVR, that's 10. And then we have one going to some, oh yeah, one going to the server, that's 11. So we have one spare port. 
And that's a little bit like I can't scale up if I need to. And I don't want to use that one to uplink to another 10 gig. I'd rather have one switch handling all of it rather than going switch to switch. I mean, our network now was switch to switch to switch, and that's terrible, so we don't want to do that. All right, guys, thanks for watching. The uh, Microtik um, 10G 12 port, I have no idea how good it is or not. I've only gone off the reviews that I ran, read online, and this is what we're going to start with. It's got to be better than the crap that we have. That's literally upside down leaning, leaning against the wall over there, which is just an 8-port Ethernet and a 2-port 10G. And the uh, only Phil was connected to the 10-port. He took one, and the server took one. So I've over here been connecting to it at gigabit, which really sucks. So, all right guys, thanks for watching. We're almost done with this mess. And then the rebuild starts, which is gonna be just as frustrating and time consuming. Thanks for watching guys, we'll see you in the next one.